guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Wednesday, December 20th. Uh, we are here the day of the Celtics-Kings game. We're not going to go over the Celtics-Kings game yet, however, because, well, it hasn't happened. And so we are <laughs> we are living in the, the past, technically. Uh, and so we have to go over that game. Uh, we're here after the Celtics lost to the Warriors uh, on Tuesday night. Um Brutal way to start out the road trip. If you want our full recap on that, check out the YouTube channel uh, and all podcast platforms. You posted it in both places. Make sure you check that out and get our thoughts there. Also, just posted uh, an edition of Talk and Seas with Bobby Kravitsky of SI Media Group. So go check that out as well. That dropped last night before the Kings game. A little preview of the Kings and some recap of the Warriors. Some, some stuff we covered in the recap ourselves. It's all so some new stuff. Uh, however... Before we get to the Celtics Kings recap, which is going to be probably the bulk of the Celtics section of this podcast, we have some popcorn to give away, Sam. We have That's some right. stuff to I, give away. I just killed my bag of dill pickle. <laughs> you can see this is a very good product because it's empty. Mm. If it sucked, it would just be sitting there and I wouldn't have eaten all of it <laughs> in the last couple days. So fine product. You always want to enter by commenting or emailing us what's popping. Because you're essentially going to get a free bag, and you can choose from over 60 flavors. The stuff mm -hmm. rules. You, If you want something sweet, they have that. Salty, spicy. They have seasonal stuff. It's awesome. I got a dark chocolate-covered strawberry-flavored popcorn at the mall. It is a fine product, let me tell you. Make sure to comment what's popping on the podcast. Only four entrants today. So, I mean, Pete, today was UFC, the day. O Trent, and Chris, they have a good spot. Good chance to win this. So make sure you comment what's popping to get your name entered on the wheel for next podcast. Uh, remember, if you've already won, you can't win again. Apologies. Go buy, buy the popcorn, though. Still buy the popcorn. So let's take a spin. Let's see who's getting some popcorn today. All four of these guys have commented multiple times. So they're itching to get themselves some popcorn. And it'll be O Trent. Cool. Always comment for some popcorn. Trent, you will be getting yourself some popcorn today. Uh, we'll get your details. Make sure to send us an email, email excuse me, at hbtcpod at gmail.com uh, with your phone number, name, and email address, and we'll get you hooked up with some popcorn. But without further ado, let's throw it over to our future selves for the recap of the Celtics-Kings game. Hope I'm not mad as hell. All right. Thank you to our past selves to throwing it over to us who are as Sam prayed for, much happier than we were this time 24 hours ago. The Celtics picked up a massive win over the Sacramento Kings, taking them down by a score of, why can't I see the score on NBA.com? Hold. Oh, it was. Hold. 144 to 119. And I got there eventually. Uh, just a complete and utter domination. They went blow for blow in the first quarter. And then the second Lost. quarter was sort of even. And then... In a complete twist of events, which I will say before we really get into it, good third quarter against the Warriors, regardless of the outcome. Another amazing third quarter in this one tonight. So at least at least they're making some progress on that. Uh, and then just absolutely reamed the Kings in the second half of the game. I mean, they won the they, they lost the first quarter by three, and then they won the second and third by eleven and fifteen, respectively. Like, yeah, it, it was just oh, damn. They, Darren Fox making a ton of tough shots. You know what? Never mind. <laughs> See you later. We're just gonna make everything. We're gonna switch up the defense, clamp up. Which and and I thought they did pick up the defensive intensity and and, and guard the perimeter much better uh, past the first quarter. Even though some of it was just tough shot making, but this was, I mean this this was exactly what the Celtics needed to do after that loss in Golden State. Yeah, this was a big spot for the Celtics to re-earn my respect. And what did they do? <laughs> They made me regret staying up to watch this game through the first quarter. And then after that, they figured it out and they played serious. You had really good outputs from five, six different guys where, I mean, even Hauser, four of six as a starter, two of four from three for 10 points, pretty solid. In the past, he hasn't been very good as a starter. It's something you talked about in the pregame show, but it was good to see him knock down a couple threes then to get into the real fun. Uh, Jalen Brown continues to be fantastic. Jalen 28, six in five, no Just... turnovers and over 50% from the field. You know, what's sick about Jalen Brown is he was, uh, didn't make any threes, but he only took three. 
He didn't mm-hmm. take 10. <laughs> you um, know what I was going to, I was going to say this last night and I, I never did, which I regret now because it would have translated. Like it does feel like Tatum should probably learn from Brown shot profile a little bit. Like, yeah. It's like, Hey, sure. I maybe just don't take 10 threes. <laughs> like, I don't mind if Tatum takes difficult shots, but just take them from the spots that you're good. From. Sure. Like sure. Tatum had moments. I'll go back to the Pacers game when they failed to close out in the fourth quarter because they couldn't get stops. Tatum was the one that was the driving force behind their offense, keeping them in the game. He made tough middies. Like, that's fine, dude. That's his shot. But I, I don't need to see fall away three. I don't need to see 10 threes from Tatum. But to get back to positives, I just had to, you know, throw some strays in his direction because that's all probably we're going to say about Tatum. But Porzingis uh, gave Scal a moment of excitement when he turned his ankle, but then turned up. He finished points he exploded in the third quarter he was a big part of their onslaught of the kings there he was efficient seven of 11 he gets to the free throw line at a very high rate made seven of eight of them and the man was just blocking everybody six blocks he might add seven they took one away from him what a poor zingus game and then I'll, I'll let you talk about Derek White, but quick shout out to Holiday for a 21 and 10 yes. double double on seven of 13, four of six. He was really in near triple double with eight rebounds. He was really a good, uh, you know, hoss on offense in the first half. <laughs> he I mean, was. He made, he might be better at step back threes than Tatum. Yes. I don't think that's out of line. I will say a couple defensive lapses for also Holiday in the first quarter. Pritchard was also good. We'll get to it all. A couple defensive lapses where Holiday like left his guy to play free safety a little bit, but great overall game from him. Great recovery. This man, Derek White, like I, 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 I'd love him. I, I, he is everything that I love about basketball. He's had maybe one bad game this season. I think it was the Memphis game or the Charlotte game. There was one game where he was kind of like meh, like he had a few turnovers, couldn't mm. have shots. He never makes the wrong play. He like almost like it it is always doing exactly what you need him to do. He is like amazing at finishing around the rim, the way he contorts his body. You call him a shapeshifter. That's exactly what he is. He shoots 39% on pull-up threes this season. He's taken over 50. I looked up that stat during the game. He Mm. is nasty at catch and shoot threes. He is nasty now at deep threes. He takes them motherfuckers from so far behind the line and they go in. He had seven assists in this game. He he had three blocks. That bet would have hit if I had made it. Like he he is he's an all-star. Like I, I don't know how you can watch basketball and not think that this is one of the most impactful players in the league. I think he might impact winning more than anybody else on the Celtics. And that is crazy. They they have, for as much as he struggled, and we can joke, blah, 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 like Tatum is an MVP caliber player. Jalen Brown is an all-NBA player. Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis have both been all-stars. Nobody impacts winning more on the Celtics than Derek White. I, going into the season, I wrote an article that said, don't forget about Derek White. I wrote it on October 13th. He has improved. Let me pull up my tweet. Sorry, I'm getting. I'm fired up. I like. I. I love, I, this. I love him. He, to he's, Jack's he's, point, Derek White, a uh, uh, low of the starters with plus sixteen, lowest of the starters. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> he is. Oh wait, did I not end up tweeting it? Why can't I find it? Regardless, <clears throat> Derek White this season. The Celtics added two All Stars. Correct, two All Stars: Drew Holiday and Christoph mm. Porzingis, and everyone expected. You know. Everyone will probably take a step back. They'll, they'll take a breather. They'll, they'll reduce their roles for the greater good of the team. Derek White has increased year over year, last year to this year, has increased points per game, rebounds per game, assists per game, steals per game, blocks per game, PER, defensive and offensive box plus minus, win shares per He is unequivocally better in every single category. And the Celtics are awesome because of it. I think they're one and two with him out. And so, like, it's obviously a small sample size, but, like, when Derek White is in the game, good things happen. That's what the plus-minus tells you. He leads the Celtics to plus-minus. He finished this game against the Kings with 28 points, two rebounds, seven assists, a steal, three blocks, only one turnover, shot 10 of 13 from the field, and six of nine from three as a hiccup. That's how you take nine threes in a game, baby. Like, he he is... I, I don't, like he he's an all star. He has to be an all star. If he's not an all star this season, all stars is just a stat award, and maybe that's what it is, right? Yeah, maybe that's is. what it is. I mean, it, the all stars game is the fakest thing ever. Sure, but shit. 
the coaches vote for the bench. If you are a coach and you watch the Celtics play basketball, Jason Tatum, Derek mm-hmm. White. Like, like, like it might be Derek White. <laughs> this man might be right. ass, dude. Like, like, I don't know what to tell you. I Derek can't White, stop making fun of it. It's too easy. Derek White is an all star. I, 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 I'm yeah. gonna keep pushing it. I'm gonna write about it in the next two days. Like, he didn't even have like obviously 28 and seven is a great stat line, but it's not like he put up 50, right? It's just everything you watch him do in the game is. Holy shit. Look, bro, he saw Steph Curry make a ridiculous three over him. Then he just chucked one up from the corner and it went in tonight. Did you see that? Yeah. Like everything that he does. That was Jalen got blocked and then White just yeah. shot it to the moon, dude. Everything he does is in the name of winning and it's phenomenal. I'll I'll, I'll shut up. But I'm 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 juiced. I'm so no, I mean, juiced. you have good reason to be juiced. One, that's your guy. Two, he had like everybody's dream game. He only missed three shots on his way to 28 points on 13 looks. And he's just excellent. Like he did everything. This was a prime example of the shapeshifter Derek White game where Tatum was out. So he just stepped up and made all his shots, got to the rim. He took nine threes. He made all of his shots from inside the arc. He got to the rim well. He he finished the half with a six spin move to seal off the defender and then just made a really tough layup. I'm, I'm happy with Derek white. I mean, he's exceeded all expectations this year. He's taken the major leap. Like you talked about, and he's proven to be one of the most important players on this team. It's just so funny because it feels like they have a zillion important guys. Of course, like you're going to be like Tatum is an important guy. He's, he's the guy, but then like Jalen Brown has gotten his feet under him after kind of a shaky start. Poor Zingas, every time he plays, just about is unstoppable. They just don't like play through him at all times. But the the man just turns that around, doesn't quarter. have to jump, and puts the ball like a foot over his head and just flicks it in. And then you yeah. have Drew Holiday, who's been like the most under the radar because he's literally not being asked to do anything on offense, mm-hmm. except for the occasional catch and shoot. Tonight he got a little extra work. And he had 20 points. But Derek White, he has been consistently doing everything. He can be the catch and shoot guy. But again, tonight, he was able to penetrate, create shots. He had seven assists. Like, he he is doing everything. This is a great, yeah, three blocks. This is a great Derek White game. It's been a good Derek White back to back. I'm excited to see what he does in LA these next two games. And I really hope he does build a case for himself, if not for the All-Star game, for some kind of major recognition, whether that's all NBA, all defense, uh, maybe most improved. Most improved shout for Derek White. Jack, what do you think? I love this guy. I, I love him so much. I, I'm, I'm looking at his games. He's had three games this year, <clears throat> excuse me, below 10 points. Other than that, the last two weeks, 21, 18, 30, 17, 14, 19, 10, 30, then 28 tonight blocks he's had one one two two zero one three 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 he's had three blocks in three straight games <laughs> like I, I truly believe that Derek white might be the most complete like at least role player in the nba he he is everything you want on your basketball team like he would fit he he is alex caruso plus a million right like everyone's like oh yeah. alex caruso this defender this, this like <clears throat> yeah right and i i I think Alex Caruso deserves all that praise for the impact he makes, but like Derek white is, if you gave Alex Caruso the ability to create his own shot, hit threes at a consistent 40% clip, including step backs. And like, like everyone came into the season saying, uh, I, I, this is, I think the lead in to my article that I wrote for the season, <clears throat> everyone was in this coming into the season hyped because they upgraded hypothetically from Marcus smart. Right. They got Marcus Smart plus in Drew Holiday. They got uh, all defensive guard who shot 40% from deep and could create his own shot. They already had that on the roster, and I wrote that, and he's showing that. I think before the season, I said Derek White was going to average 15, 5, and 5. Sorry, it's 16, 4, and 5 right now. Sue me. Pretty close. And he's doing it at 48, 41 splits, and those are going to go up after tonight. Like Everything he touches turns to gold right now he, he can do no wrong and that's not a product of him being hot that's a product of him constantly doing the correct thing on the basketball court Derek white is the player that every single basketball fan in the world should want to be 
Like D'Lo made the remember when D'Lo was like, I want to be Derek White, right? And like everyone was like, yeah. haha. If you are growing up trying to be in the league, you need to be like Derek White. And and I mean that so seriously. Like, if you can be half of Derek White, you will be a legitimate NBA. Like, he is the mold. He he is everything anybody trying to get into the league should want to be if, if you're on the fringes, right? If you're not some top-tier prospect who's gonna be a Jason Tatum or or, or Kevin Durant. You should want to be Derek White shooting 42% from three and playing elite defense. That is, that is all teams want. And then you act like I can't, I can't, and I'm obviously I know you love Josh Richardson, but I can't believe there were truly people who were completely out on this trade. I know you like Josh. You obviously were in on the trade. It was just like, oh, Josh, I didn't really like, care. It was just like, damn, that sucks. That guy was cool. But like, there were legitimately people that were like, nah, this trade sucks, blah, blah, blah. But like, he has exceeded all of those expectations in these two and a half years. Like Derek, uh, I can't explain it. Like watching him every night is like, I, I was literally, I was smiling the whole fucking game. I'm just sitting there like a little kid, like, Oh, look at him. Look at him. Look at the three. Like it, it's everything that anybody should ever want to be who plays basketball. Like that is who people should want to be like in, in the most serious sense. Like he does everything correctly. Score early this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action of NFL. The app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including you got spreads. You get your player props, you get over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Over the last seven games, so this includes... So this is after the Pacers game. Okay. Derek White, seven games played. 21.1 points on 54.2, 49.2. 87% and a half from the line. Then 4.6 assists, 4.3 rebounds, 1.7 steals and two blocks per game. <laughs> Pretty crazy stats. Put like efficient splits. The defensive numbers are the crazy ones. And to put that in perspective, he's third on the team in scoring in that span. But to the Celtics credit, they have four guys. Porzingis, who has only played five of those games. Just around 20. Porzingis is at 19.8, so we'll we'll round it up to 20. But they've had a legitimate four 20-point-per-game scorers who have all been efficient. Like, even Porzingis, Jack, we talked about him taking a dip three-point-wise. Mm-hmm. The man, over the last five appearances in the seven-game span, he sat out two games. 42.3% from three. Pretty fire. Like, awesome. You know what sucks is uh, the efficiency. I really only looked at this split uh, stretch because I was curious how Jalen had bumped up his free throw percentage. Yeah. If you're wondering, 88% over this span. Good Huge. for him. But uh, both him and Tatum. Jalen, 31-4. Tatum, 30.8% from three. They, they both could do a little bit better. Tatum, 40% from the field real real bad he's been rough lately he's struggled he struggled a lot um yeah i can't say enough good things about Derek white i could talk about Derek white for the entire entirety of this podcast so i won't um but he is let me see he is 31st in the nba in blocks right now he has 25 blocks right now this season that is more than Al Horford. That's more than Al, uh, Anyeka Okongwu. That's more than Jared Allen. That's more than Jokic. That's more than Vooch. That's more than, like, he's a legitimate center. Like, he's he's shop blocking like a center. Um, anyways, uh, let me let me stop about Derek White because, I like I said, I'll go on for 30 minutes. <clears throat> Other guys played well. Peyton Pritchard, we mentioned it. He had 24-4 and four in this one. Um, 20 points, 4 rebounds, 4 assists, 6 of 12, 6 of 11 from 3. He was lights out uh, on a night where the Celtics really needed him to be. He was awesome. Um, mm. And then the entire bench mob w- was great. Namish Keda only shot three of eight, but he grabbed a lot of those offensive rebounds on his own, four offensive rebounds. He had six and eight tonight. Um, 
O'Shea Brissett was also good. He got 16 minutes. Uh, he had three points, but he was killing the glass. He had five rebounds, yes. uh, two offensive, and both of his offensive rebounds directly led to threes, which was huge at the time. The Celtics were really turning the tide, so he was great. And Sam Hauser with a a little bounce back here t- only took four threes, but he was two or four on those, so that was good to see uh, him get back in, in the uh, in the make column. Uh, so, <clears throat> yeah, I would sure love it if like Hauser and Pritchard could have a really good game at the same time. <laughs> I will Hauser was a bad game. But like like did it really feel like Hauser was great tonight? I thought he played okay defense. I I I just don't think the shots were there for him. I don't you, think he you was You know bad. what I mean? Like it didn't really feel like he was like <clears throat> the dominant player we had seen over the last two weeks up until uh yesterday. It, it, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm I not like trying to shit on him. I'm just like it is funny. I was gonna like, say I don't Pritchard, expect Hauser to have it every night. <laughs> Pritchard Pritchard's finally like playing well the last couple games, and now like Hauser sucks. It's just how it's gone all year. Like he had made missed eleven straight threes up up until uh, he made one today. So. They've had some big games together. What one? Cleveland. Hauser had eleven, and Pritchard had twenty one. I guess that's similar to tonight. Hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not. I, I know what you're saying. It is funny how like it, one... it just feels like like they can't like just connect for like one big one, just like a big bench boys game. Yeah. But I do want to shout out O'Shea Brissett. O'Shea Brissett, yeah, kind of starting to impress me. O'Shea Brissett, somebody I think that may wind up getting some fingerprints on some Celtics wins down the ro- uh, down the road here, mm-hmm. because like you said, he's all over the glass. He he's played really well in his last three appearances. He had the big game against the Magic. He had double digits. Yesterday he had six like straight points in the first half and then didn't see the floor again. Had a brief stint in the third. And then tonight only has three points, only took the one shot, and it was a three. How about that? Made a three. Looked pretty comfortable. He just pulled it. Mm-hmm. If he can be consistent from three, oh man, that would rule. <laughs> I I think they just need to keep working him. He made one I, I th- tonight. I no, but like I, what I'm saying is like I think shooting is something I truly believe can be fixed in every. I agree. I agree. Just keep working with the man because besides that, you have a real quality player. Like he could be mm-hmm. Jay Crowder if he's making threes. He could be Jay Crowder, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. It, match that off your bench. That'd be great. That would be the buyout guy everyone's looking for. O'Shea Brissett. That'd be sick. Yeah, I mean, I think he was great in this game. Like I said, those two rebounds and assists he had were at huge points in the game. He's been he's been great. He played well against the Warriors, too, in his brief stints. Um, I, I mean, I was saying it when Lamar Stevens and um, Delano Band were getting minutes. Like, as much as I loved and was re- and am rooting for Lamar Stevens, like, it just felt like O'Shea could bring a little bit more with that athleticism and nose for rebounding. Um, considering how well he's done it and he gets two opportunities and look what happens. Like he's been yeah. very impressive in those two games. Um, <clears throat> Jalen Brown, we talked about awesome still six assists, no turnovers is, I mean, everything you've wanted from Jalen Brown over the past X amount of, uh, of seasons of him being the primary Mind guy you, or one of the primary guys. This is a day without Tatum where he had everybody paying attention to him. Not mm. only from a viewership standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, he was, I mean, listen, I know they had a, Six guys have 20 points today. But if you're the Kings, you're going into tonight like, hey, Jalen Brown's going to be doing a whole lot. Let's play yeah. defense on him. And yeah. he handled that really well. He was efficient. He three dunks cool in, jump. in the first he quarter. Four. Yeah, he had, he had the big one in the second half. I mean, I, I was very happy with Jalen. And again, he's shown discipline not only with, like, going into a million people, but also with shooting a million threes that might not be the best threes. So very good. Very impressive from Jalen. Keep it that up. That dunk was fucking that crazy dunk. <laughs> He's, I saw, I think it was Josh Horford, uh, Hor- Al Horford's brother tweeted. He goes, Jalen, the best in-game dunker in the NBA? Question mark. Kind of feels like that. He's just yeah. killing people this season. I, yeah, I feel like. Dunk. <clears throat> it's true. <laughs> That's a case. I want to see a Pritchard dunk. I feel like heading into the I season. I want to see one too. Jalen Brown was either going to go one of two ways. It was going to be either. I got my money. I deserve the shots. Let me take the shots or let me find my role in the offense, be super aggressive and make the right plays. And he's taken the second approach and he has been 
phenomenal. Like she's finding the correct balance of staying aggressive and attacking the paint while also making the right plays and looking for guys. Like I've been so, so impressed with Jalen Brown this season. Cause this is not like as much as I wrote about it and said, this was the next step. Like I couldn't have imagined it going to this level and it's been nuts. Yeah. I mean, we, we both did some stuff on this. Like I did the one at the beginning of the month. Cause I was just like, damn, like he ruled against the Bucks, but was awful against the magic. And he had impacts on the outcome of both those games. And ever since then, he has just been like, real shit? All right, yeah, I will impact the way this team plays. You bet, buddy. And the, again, like, I'm very impressed with his discipline. I don't know off the top of my head. I really don't want you to look it up. But I'd imagine <clears throat> that there is, like, a point to this. But I'd imagine his catch-and-shoot threes are a higher percentage than the off-the-dribble threes. And the reason why that's important is – Thinking back to the seven game stretch where both him and Tatum have shot like around 31%, and the Celtics have been six and one, and their two best scorers have been ass from three. Hmm. You know what that says? Is they don't necessarily need to take threes. Those guys, their job is to put pressure on the defense. The rest of the guys, including them when they don't have the ball, are then responsible for catching and shooting if the team's going to be at its best. Jalen is shooting only 34.7% on catch and shoot. Things. It does seem. <laughs> I, yeah, I do wonder if it's been up. It wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder if maybe he's been better over the last X amount of games. Um, Nope, he's been definitely worse. not. No, scratch he's been stat, worse. Yeah, yeah, fake uh, that. But I mean, I, he's still been. He's like not solid. taking them though. He's not like. I think the point stands that he's not taking a lot of threes this season. Like, I, I, I would hazard to guess that he is down on three point attempts total. Yeah, he took seven point three last year. He's taking fewer threes than he has since the 2019-20 season. Like, that's significant. Um, that's fine. Like, I'm, uh, I'm yeah, not no, I agree. Three. Like, I'm not anti. I'm. I'm. I've turned a corner. I'm progressive. <laughs> I. I am pro three, just not the dumb ones. So, I don't need to see the superstars take the dumb ones. Sure. <laughs> that. That's all. It's like they can take. They can take the catch shoot ones. I think that's the next step for the Celtics. Like after watching like them play well, I think we're just rambling and we're tired at this point. Definitely. I truly, I truly think like Tatum and Brown do not need to be efficient or or be taking a bulk of threes. Okay, okay. What they do need to do is be ready when they are the recipient of a kick. That's it. Yeah, or a swing. That's it. I agree. I agree. Um, I think that's it. Steve McKaylu still has the wackest whistle in the league. Don't get it. Good. He also be actually. <clears throat> Good hustle, but if that man's not getting 20 minutes a night, he ain't gonna make his threes. That's what I've learned. <laughs> that's that's what we've learned, which ass. is fine. Fair shout enough, out to Svi, or excuse me, shout out to Mish Keda again as well. Lamar Stevens got in there. It is what it is. Um, shout out to Aaron Fox, who was just like fucking nasty. Happy birthday. He took 14 shots in the first half and four in the second half. Probably not the best plan if you're the Kings, mm. but well, they were down happy, by a happy lot. birthday from HPTC to you. We wish it was our birthday so we could party too. Hey, hey, um, twenty six point loss for your yeah. birthday. <laughs> Shout out Keon Ellis, who was a positive plus minus. And oh, 19. Keon Ellis was the one, Jack, that I texted you about. Put your face <laughs> yes. three, and he just like literally put like his hands on his head. He's like, "Fuck, dude." <laughs> He's just like, "God damn I need it!" To find it. I'm gonna yeah. find it. Anyways, uh, any final thoughts before we throw it back over to our? No, nah, dude, I'm mad tired. All right, we'll get out of here. Thank y'all for, I was about to outro it. Oh, let me throw it to our past selves. All right. Thank you to our future selves for going over the Celtics Kings game. Hopefully, as Sam uh, said, he's not mad. It was a fine recap. We'll have to see, I suppose, when we get there. But um, we're going to talk about a Bleacher Report article because I know that's exactly what we all want to talk about. Shout out Bleacher Report. They oh, keep yeah. the content flowing in the offseason. They put together an article with Zach Buckley of Bleacher Report uh, saying one current free agent every team should go after. One current free agent that could help the team. Uh, and for the Celtics, they put Javante Green, a former Celtic. Now, we don't have to necessarily go super in-depth regarding Javante Green in particular. But what I will say is Javante Green feels like 
the same player as O'Shea Brissett, just shorter, right? Like they, they, they do a lot of the similar things. Like maybe Javante Green is a slightly better overall defender. Maybe he's a little bit better. Maybe he's a little bit more athletic, as crazy as that sounds, because O'Shea Brissett's crazy athletic. But what I wanted to ask and use this to talk about is if the Celtics did target a free agent or a buyout guy or something, what are you looking for? And it's early in the season. It, it doesn't seem like they necessarily need anything right now. But if, if I had to press you and said, if you're looking to sign somebody on the buyout market or a free agent right now, who are you signing and what type of player? I think the best answer to this, as we've talked to it at large depths now, is a guard that you can bring off the bench who can be a switchable defender and also make threes, which is not probably somebody you're going to get in any of those circumstances. But it is something that would add a new wrinkle to your team. I think that's the only thing you're missing. It's it's good to think about adding a guard that can give you a little bit more defense off the bench. Pritchard has been great, and he's really found his footing lately. He played well against the Warriors, but they didn't have him out there late in the game because they didn't want him to get picked on defensively, and they really could have used his shot making. Sam Hauser got a bulk of minutes later in the game, and he didn't make any threes yesterday. They could have used some extra looks for Pritchard. I think if they're able to find a defensive-minded guard that can give them a little bit of energy off the bench, it would be helpful. But I, I don't have a name for you. I can't be like, well, they have that guy. Are you going to say Javon Carter? No, I'm going to say Chris Dunn. Okay. Providence. Sure. That's my guy. Providence him or, him or Javon Carter. Way. Over Marquette. Say? Number six oh. Marquette falls at the AMP, formerly known as the Dunk. So it is the Dunk. It's the Dunkin' Donuts Center. It AMP is the Dunk. dunk. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd take Javon Carter or Chris Dunn personally. I think I'd rather target that sort of switchable big four or five guy. I, I think that might be a bit more important in my eyes. Um, it's an extra defensive boost, just an extra guy. That said, you kind of already have that in Brissett and Lamar Stevens, so maybe you do go defensive guard. Truly, it doesn't really feel to me like they need need anything right now like as much as the Warriors lost stung and as much as it sucked and there was tendencies it wasn't a matter of personnel in that game it was just a matter of them dropping the ball in the wrong spots like I, I can't point to a specific spot on the roster and say they really lack in that position right even they're like their center depth like Namish Kade has been stepping up Luke Cornett's a fine third string big like they've got Lamar Stevens and O'Shea Brissett to provide them with some uh, solid minutes you know Delano Banton's been fine when he's played like they, they've got solid enough guys up and down the roster so I don't know. Uh, uh, Javante Green would be cool because it's a former Celtic. Um, <clears throat> I was all in on the Daniel Tice reunion when that was a slight possibility for a brief moment yeah. in time. But it just doesn't really feel like they need anything super bad right now. So <clears throat> I, I think they're fine where they're at, personally. You know what, Jack? Hmm. Is it... Uh, it might be time for a vibes move. What is the vibe? No, you, not Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> it, I'm not saying that it has to be Isaiah Thomas. But I, I do think there is a trend in what we've talked about in this discussion where we discussed the possibility of bringing Javante Green back, Daniel Tice, even name-dropping Isaiah Thomas. Uh, perhaps Blake Griffin is still limber and, and can rejoin the team. That I would be in on. That... I would be in on that. Mm -hmm. Let's just like kind of brainstorm for a second. Do we have more former Celtics out there? That could be like ready to hoop. I saw somebody be like, yo, bring back Malik Fitz. And I was like, <laughs> sure. But like also I'd bring like, back. What are you gonna get out of Malik Fitz? Like, I I'm I'm for it. He was good vibes. He was the bench captain. He was mm -hmm. hyping the boys up in the playoff run in 22. But I don't really know, like, I honestly can't even tell you like what his skill set is. And, no, and he I was know. like a I think he could shoot threes, but I don't know if he's played a lot of defense. I'm all in on Blake. Love that idea. I definitely do that. I don't know. Did he ever technically play for the Celtics? I need to check if before he made I say a three this. in. I want to say at the end of the. Not Fitz. I'm not seven. talking about Fitz. Sorry, I, I'm talking to myself. This player, I don't. Did Theo Pinson ever technically join the Celtics? He might have got some garbage time. He was a part of the team. He was okay, but he never actually played in the regular season, according to this. Theo Pinson would be the ultimate vibes. Like Theo he Pinson is, is guy. He is vibes. No longer a member of the Mavericks. I could see mm -hmm. it. That'd be sick. That'd be cool. Maybe you bring back Kemba. You just stick him there and if you hang out. I mean, they <laughs> like Griffin. Blake Griffin's the top of the top, though. That is that is it. I will he say the Blake. the funniest possible thing they could do. This would never ever in a million years happen because this player would never do it. 
They should just sign you, Donis Haslam. <laughs> and hope they play the Heat in the playoffs. Just have just him sitting him there. All yeah. Gray. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, Blake they could like just play. like I mean, Pierce has been hanging out. Just like give him a jersey and let him sit there. Put him in the game if you're up thirty. Everyone get hyped for that. Yeah, you have a roster spot. Why not? I like the Blake. I like the Blake play. Blake Griffin I think would be a lot of fun, man. Play. They all like Blake last year. Why not? <laughs> that'd be that'd be electric. They, I hope they bring him in. That I, I think. I, mean, there I, some... I don't think it's a team thing right now. I think it's a Blake Griffin thing. I mean, there were some rumblings at the start reports. of the season that like they would wait till mid season to see if he'd be open to it. So getting there, maybe. Something's maybe. Just like, like, <clears throat> hold Blake, out hope. You, you want to play yet? And he's like, no. Hold out hope. Don't you don't even have to play. Just come. Just come hang out. Just come yeah, chill. Just come hang out. Would be very cool. I'm telling you, I think they should do a raffle, and one guy, just random guy off the street, gets to join the team each game. They just signed Tom Brady. <laughs> Come on, do Tom. That. I mean, like dog. seriously, like if if you're the Celtics, charge like fifty dollars and do like a big like global entry, and you can join the team, sit on the bench for a game, get a uniform. I mean, when your team is like as good as the Celtics are. Even if you're not the Celtics, like let's just say the Utah Jazz were an absolute hoss, they should just bring in random guys to come hang out. Or on the opposite end of the spectrum, could it really hurt the Pistons if they just brought in a random I, guy? I just keep seeing the graphic that's like open tryouts with the Pistons logo on it on Twitter. <sighs> tough. Very tough. All right. Maybe you let's bring go in to the. Eaton. <laughs> fucking Pete. Let's go to the email. See what y'all have to say. We have a decent amount of emails today to go over. So appreciate y'all for tuning in uh, to come hang out with us. Let me put the in pop needle on the screen as well. Um, <clears throat> here we go. First one. This is one we missed from last pod. Michael, we literally got this email 30 seconds after we stopped recording. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> he's Michael Haley, loyal listener, potential deadline targets. Jack and Sam, hope you're both doing well. After reading the news that the Celtics are looking to upgrade their bench per Shams, I took a look at the 29 other rosters and made a list of potential reasonable trade, reasonable, but probably not sexy trade targets. The Celtics could go after. Let me know what you think. It's not terribly long. Also, I watched The Departed for the first time last night. It was amazing. I've Departed never seen The movie. Departed. Yeah, I, I was literally going to be like, have you seen The Departed, Jack? And I knew you were going to say no. <laughs> I've only seen it once, in fairness. <laughs> Now, we're going to semi-rapid fire to this because despite Michael saying it's not too terribly long, there are a hefty amount of names on this list. So we're, we are, we're, we're going go, to rock through Thank it. you for taking the right. time, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Number one, Zach Collins. Spurs aren't giving him up. And he makes money doesn't money. work. Money doesn't work. Spurs like him too much. He's a full-time starter this year. He's playing really well. Uh, I think he's averaging. Let me see. He's averaging 13, six and three and a half. And he's playing. 27 minutes tonight for the Spurs. They're not giving him up. So, sorry. 0-1. Charles Bassey, ACL out for the season. Unfortunately. <laughs> sorry. Over maybe two. this is a favor trade. You're like, we'll like take him. Actually, I'm pretty sure they just waived him, didn't they? Uh, or like send him to the G League or whatever. So. Kind of like what the Celtics did with Jay Scrub. Like they kind of uh, no. keep Jay Scrub around, but he's not. No, I don't think team. so. Because he's on a standard deal. Charles okay. Bassey, so. Uh, but he is out for the season, unfortunately. Simone Fontecchio. Now, I am in on this only because it would be super cool to have Simone on the team. <laughs> Just for and your name up, purposes? Uh, yes, that's it. I that's don't even I know who this person is. So, And in Michael's defense, unbeknownst to me, Simone Fontecchio is playing 20 minutes a night this year. Eight and a half points, two and a half rebounds, 1.2 assists, 44, 38.6 splits. Actually having a good season. He plays in Utah. He's 6'8". He's a shooter. Okay actually don't hate it he's actually playing well this season he's a bigger body he's effectively sam hauser like to be honest so you okay. don't need it um i think me being I dumb like does help like the explanation of this to a listener because like you have to explain <laughs> it to me like i'm a child so they also it, get informed would be very cool to have simone on the team though i will say i will i was i was hoping that Simone Fontecchio's entrance into the NBA would make it so I could choose my actual last name in 2K. Unfortunately, it's just first okay. name still. <laughs> well, you know what? Like, you think it would be fun to have a Simone on the team, but having a Sam on the team isn't fun because when he sucks, everyone's like, damn, like, Sam's fucking terrible today. So when when it's like, wow, Simone can't hit the side of a barn, you're like, damn, dude, that's mean. Nah. <clears throat> I think it'd be cool. Simone is an uncommon enough name where I just, I, I want the recognition. Lonnie Walker, the fourth. What's the contract? They're not trading. They're not trading him. Uh, a minimum. He's on a minimum. Minimum. Um. Mm -hmm. 
He's and that's have averaging... no reason to suck. That's that's the hang up. He's also averaging 14 and a half, two and a half, one and a half on 49, 46 splits. Go Shoot 46 percent from deep on five and a half attempts a game. I just don't think they're trading him for what the Celtics would be willing to give up. So, I mean, I like the idea, but I don't that's think a new so. name. That's like that's like a Christmas list name. You know, it's like maybe you'll get it. Maybe you won't. But I'd be curious. I just I don't think the Nets have a reason to like kind of settle this season because they don't have their own pick. So they're not going to be like, well, yeah. we're not going to win the title anyway. It'd no, also be a one year rental. Try their best. It'd also be a one year rental. So like that's all right. I don't know. Uh, Jalen McDaniels. Yeah, we talked about this in the last pod. Name drop 10. Wouldn't hate it. It's fine. I think we name drop the next guy, too, because I can see yep. it a little bit peeking out. Otto Porter Jr., another oh. guy. Sure. Fine with both of these guys. I think they could be TPE targets. Tory Craig, again, talked about last pod. Shout he out. Be the winner. Great minds. I love Tory Craig. I love that idea. I think he'd be great. <clears throat> this the list of what we and it's funny because you definitely didn't hear the last pod when you put this on here because he wasn't out room with us <clears throat> so yep and on all those isaiah jackson i don't think the pacers are going to trade him he's been playing really well lately he's also on a minimum contract um i just don't think the pacers will give him up he's he is a good hustle well. energy guy though <clears throat> like if the Celtics were to get him i could see why it would work and yeah you know why they would go out and make the move he's a little bit smaller he's athletic so he can kind of move a little bit. He's had a string of monster games lately. 15 and, and 4, 12 oh, and 4, good. 20 and 13, 9 and 3, 10 and 5, 11 and 6. Like, he's been playing really well. I don't think Indiana's in a rush to give him up. Um, <clears throat> Next one, Jalen Smith. Again, don't think Indiana's in a rush to give him up. He's been He's been hurt for most of the season. He's been out for a while, but he was killing it for them before he went out. Yeah, he's played in only 14 games this year, and he hasn't played in a game since November 27th. But up to that point, he was averaging 10, 5.5 on 71, 68, or 67 splits. <laughs> wasn't wasn't missing too many shots there. Uh, so <clears throat> don't know if they'd give, give up well. the farm. <laughs> uh, Poku, Alexej Pokusevsky. I guess. I, I don't hate this. It's not the worst idea. Um, he's only played in seven games this year on 18 12 splits so <laughs> i don't know that's exactly what you only get want. better reclamation project let's go <clears throat> i suppose i don't hate it it's whatever only cost you a second think... yeah he's not gonna play is the thing like eh. uh anybody on the thunder i don't Shea? know if they're good, good <laughs> yeah good target i don't know how much they're willing to trade like bottom end pieces for nothing anymore like, if you like a team that could be wanting to win no no, they definitely uh, want to win. Jabari Walker. I don't hate it. Um, Sam, do you know who Jabari Walker is? I don't. <laughs> uh, he's on the Trailblazers. He's six foot nine. He's a big body defender. Um, think bigger Lamar Stevens, effectively. Okay. Um, don't hate it. He's averaging 7.3 points, 4.8 rebounds. He's only 21 years old. Uh, he's playing 17 and a half minutes for them this year. He feels like a guy they'll probably want to keep into the fold, but. Maybe if you really want to give up a, f- a couple seconds, see if they bite. I don't hate it. I like Jabari Walker coming out of the draft a couple years ago, so I think it'd be all right, but meh, it's fine. Uh, he's he is a large man, though. Like, that is the biggest thing to know about Jabari Walker. Also, went to Colorado, so handshake Derek White. But you know who they boy. need to get, you know? <clears throat> mm. Kenneth Lofton Jr. No. <laughs> Speaking of big boys. No. Sadiq Bay. I don't think the Hawks would give him up he's averaging 13 six and one and a half on 47 35 splits and playing 32 minutes a night don't know if you're going to get him for the price point you're looking for only way i could see that one yeah the only way i could see it potentially becoming a even semi-realistic possibility is if the celtics get in and say hey third team trade you need to give up some salary uh, Sadiq Bay is making enough to fit in the TPE, but you also need to send out money to make this money work for Pascal Siakam. We'll take him for a first round pick. There you go. That's the only way I think it's possible. Mm. Is that possible? Maybe. And I wouldn't hate it. I think Sadiq Bay is a good player. He's a bigger guy. At the same time, though, I don't know if he necessarily fits super well into what the Celtics are doing. So I'm like, meh, it's fine. But yeah, it's just like, is he better than Hauser? No. <laughs> mm. that, that's really what it comes down to. Mm hmm. Or Nick is he Richards. that different? Not really. Yeah. You mentioned Nick Richards. 
Nick Richards, and if anything, Sadiq Bay needs the ball in his hands too much. But Nick Richards, another guy we talked about in the last pod. I think he'd be fine. He's under contract. He's a tradable contract for a few years. JT Thor, good player. He's a good defender. He hasn't really figured it out in the league yet. He's on the Hornets. Um, I don't know how much run he's getting this season. Um, yeah, he's averaging three and three on 37, 29 splits. He's just, he hasn't figured out a shot ever. He's a I career mean, sub 40% shooter. I so. joked about Poku, but like the Celtics really don't need like a project right now. Like what they need is somebody that can fill the gap, whatever gap they decide that they have. We haven't necessarily figured it out. The only gap they have is the one between their ears. Sometimes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're dumb, but like from a rotation standpoint, there really aren't that many guys you could be like, or, or like places you're like, oh, they need a guy there, because hmm. it just doesn't feel like they they could use an upgrade. Like no no one that we can talk about can realistically like bump Sam Hauser. Like I think the most fun thing to talk about is wing guys, but none of them are bumping Hauser, and I don't know if Joe is going to really extend the rotation too far past eight. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Sorry. Uh, or not. Jason Tatum is not playing tonight. We. For the Celtics. Just tweeting that out. Um. Okay. Yep. Next guy on the list uh, is Chuma Okiki. Another guy we did, in fact, talk about on the pod. I wouldn't hate it. It just like, is he that much better than the guys they have? No. So like, what's the point at that point? Like, it's whatever. Unless they really like him. Uh, Denny Avdia. I don't think they're going to be giving up Denny Avdi. I also think he's poison pilled, so it's really impossible to get him because he signed an extension. Um, so I don't, I don't think that's realistically a possibility because of the poison pill. Um, unfortunately, because Denny Avdi is a I fine see. player. Anthony Gill, <laughs> Anthony Gill is the player you name to prove that you just know a million NBA players because no one knows who Anthony Gill is. I don't. <laughs> he I is, certainly don't. He's been on the Wizards for a few years. He's six seven. He doesn't really do much. He doesn't shoot threes. He's an okay defender. He's averaging two and one and a half. He's just kind of there, to be honest. I, I don't know why seen, he's still on a contract. Have you seen the I think you should leave where Tim Robinson is hosting the game show and mm. they have the chunky mascot and the mascot doesn't know what it does and he's like flipping out the mascot. He's like, figure out what you do. He's <laughs> screaming at it because it just keeps like fumbling around. It doesn't know. So it sounds like that's Anthony Gill. Figure out what you do, Anthony Gill. <clears throat> yeah, sure. <laughs> Tracks. Uh, Corey Kispert. I think they like trading. him too much. Yeah, they're not trading Corey Kispert. Uh, I mean, he's averaging 11, 2, and 1.5 on 45, 38 splits, and he's a solid defender. Unless it's the case of, all right, we'll give you two first-round picks for Corey Kispert, sort of like the Wiz- or the uh Derek White trade a couple years ago where they were like, all right, we'll give you all this for Derek White because we think he really, really fits. Like if they think Corey Kispert's the final straw, the final piece, sure. But he also needs an extension in a couple years. You also already have Sam Hauser, Peyton Pritchard. Like you don't really need Corey Kispert. Not yeah. not enough to go all in on that. Tari Eason, another guy where the Rockets just aren't going to trade <laughs> Tari Eason. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, he's averaging nine, seven and one on 48 or 47, 42 splits. It's hard. <laughs> it's, it's hard him. to go through and like pick out guys that are both worth the time in consideration and also would be available. Mm-hmm. So big respect for Mike for actually yeah. trying. He's done more yeah. than me on this front. I'm not crapping on you. I'm just saying I don't think that's a, a realistic one. Uh, Aaron Holiday is a maybe, I guess. He's 27 at this point, which is crazy. I didn't think he was that old. Uh, averaging 7-2-2 two, and two on 46-31 splits. Actually playing really well this season in his limited minutes. Maybe if they tossed a couple seconds, you bring him in as an extra guard, the holiday connection. I don't actually hate that idea if they're willing. Like, that's it's the fine big uh, culture thing. <clears throat> Celtics show respect <clears throat> for family. Good for them. Jock Londale, another big guy. I mean, I think if you put a Venn diagram, Jock Londale, Luke Cornett, same shit. <laughs> like it's, one circle. Yeah, it's not going to do much. Jock Landell's playing worse than Luke Cornett this season. He's averaging one and a half and one and a half on 36% shooting as a big man. Probably not great. Top. Probably don't really want it. Yeah, not ideal. Um, Jay Sean Tate. I don't hate it. Um, no, no rhyme intended. Uh, it's fine. He's averaging five and three on good splits. He's not really playing a ton. He's averaging like 18 minutes, which is his fewest of his career. He's 
uh, it's fine. Like, I just don't know how much extra he brings to the table. Um, and that's, that's the problem with most of these guys, like John Conchar, fine. Najee Marshall. I actually really like Najee Marshall, so I wouldn't hate that one. Jeremiah mm-hmm. Robinson Earl, fine. But like most of these guys you can look at and say, are they better than Sam Hauser? No. Are they better than Lamar Stevens? Yeah. Maybe. And that's all that really matters. Like, the, the, like I'm not saying like it's a bad list. This is just the reality of where the Celtics are at. They don't, they're not in a position to make any big swings. Um, that said, I, if you wanted really my favorite, uh, like who I like most off this list, Tory Craig, um, Tory Craig, Aaron one. Holiday, and Najee Marshall. I'll give you those. the guy those from Utah. My favorites. Simone. Simone Fontaki is fine too, just for the name. Uh, and add Chris Dunn. Add Chris Dunn to the list. I like Chris, Chris. Dunn's a good one. I, I'm for that. I'm for it. Yeah. All right. What's popping? Glass is always half, half full. This is from a couple days ago. Afternoon, guys. Just got done watching Monday's Talk and Z's installment and all the talk about rumored buyout guys are paying for post insurance. Yeah, I love alliteration. Got me thinking that I think Cornette's injury right now might be a blessing for the Celtics. The rest of the team is relatively healthy, so it allows Keita to a chance to get minutes with regular bench guys in the Cornet rotation. Uh, if you look at what he did in Sunday's game against the magic, he defended better without fouling, including guarding Cole Anthony out at the arc. Yes. Nimi is a work in progress, but given the Celtics, let him let their other two way big man, Nathan Knight out of his contract with Andrew Peterson. I think the Celtics believe he is making progress. Additionally, I think pairing him with Peyton Pritchard will help him get more confidence with this low post game as Pritchard is the Celtics best guard at getting people the ball in their shooting pocket, whether that's Hauser for a three or clean lob clean lob pass at the rim so yeah we go a week maybe two without the green cornet except as the world's tallest cheerleader but we not only learn what kata can contribute but give him a chance to grow his game i told you i like alliteration be well rj i love the alliteration it makes it impossible for me to read this also <laughs> i'm stumbling RJ. wait till past rj watches the warriors game and sees or maybe we have one. a new email <clears throat> this is true yeah kata has been good I, I like it i still don't think he should necessarily pass take from rj yeah, I don't think he necessarily should pass Cornette in the rotation. I said this on the latest talk and sees, which should be up soon. Um, but I think he should be used in some specific spots, which is good. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, next, from Ryan Hall, Lamar Stevens. Is it me, or would Lamar fit well playing the Grant Williams role we are so desperately looking for? He can knock down the three ball, so you have to respect it. Well, he's a very good defender with a big body that won't get bullied, and he is great at making shots around the rim. Sneaky good mid-range with explosive explosive dunks. On top of that, he has soft hands around the rim. I think you could get him to play more with our first team boys to at least see what we have. Thoughts? Keep up the good works, Ryan H. Thank you, Ryan. The email, this was about a day ago. Um, We mentioned this at the start of the season, that he could potentially play the role. Unfortunately... Lamar Stevens is not even in the same like atmosphere as Great Williams is a three point shooter, and that's really what it comes down to. Like it's just well, it, that, it's not even close. He hasn't got much opportunity to prove himself. In fairness to Lamar Stevens, he has also been somebody throughout his career that's improved every single season shooting threes. Technically, as this year because he's shooting thirty three percent compared to thirty one last year, but he's definitely not consistent enough to be on that Grant Williams level, like you're saying. But There is a chance, like, if he got more run, he could get, like, a rhythm and make threes. It's just, right now, what evidence we have is not enough for Missoula to give him the extra opportunity unless it's, like, completely necessary. He's also never shown that he can be consistent. As much as he has, quote, improved, he shot, like, less than two a year every year. So, like, it's not like he's ever going to be or has been a guy to take threes. So, it's just, as much as I'd like to have him in that role, it's just not really built the same they're not built the same um next rj uh this is from <clears throat> 21 hours ago before the warriors game let's pop in and toast to good health afternoon guys looking forward to tonight's game against the warriors and i thought i'd put something that's been on uh point out something that's been on our side so far good health god knock on wood what are you doing uh well it does it's too late now <laughs> tatum's already <laughs> out Good health. Yes, I know KP had his week off and Luke is recovering for another week or so, but that's been it. Compare that to last year when Rob missed more than half the season at the 25 game mark. Brogdon was out five games. Marcus three. Al had missed five because the shoulder knock on wood. Well, it's too late. Uh, <laughs> do you think that Coach Missoula will use some of the upcoming softballs and meatballs to schedule uh, on the schedule like Detroit, Toronto, San Antonio, Utah to, if not outright sit some guys, at least get more playing time for deeper bench players, both to reward them and manage minutes for the starters. Be well and stay well, RJ. 
well, now that Tatum's out, other guys will definitely have a chance to step up. Um, and I do think he might give those guys some chances moving forward. I think he use, uses injury absences to do that, and I think we've seen that so far. Yeah, I mean, the Celtics certainly have enough guys at the wing spot that they can try today, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, Brissett, who actually played well yesterday against the Warriors, I'm kind of surprised he get back in the game. Uh, Mikhailu, Lamar Stevens, even. I'm sure, I'm sure Hauser's going to start. But, yeah, sucks that Tatum got hurt. Bad timing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Definitely. Definitely. All right. What's popping? I'm okay with the Warriors game. This is after the Warriors game. Oof. Uh, even guys, sorry, Sam, for the OT loss. I know you hate those especially, but I'm not looking sure at this do. as doom and gloom. It's a loss, but it didn't surprise me the way the Celtics were not getting threes to drop. They weren't forcing them. They were good looks. They just didn't fall. Celtics didn't look panicked either. My complaint was the last shot at the end of regulation. Of all the times to use the timeout and run the ATO play, that was it. Uh, no need to, quote, let them figure it out. Use the time to strategize for a good look. I like Nimi's play tonight. Got to give him some love, and Sam will find a stroke again. We'll be well. Uh, oh, excuse me. We'll be okay. Be well, RJ. I agree with most of the points you made. I just think it was the defense that was the biggest problem. And we've, I mean, we've talked about that a million times now. Yeah. It's just like two stops in the last seven <laughs> minutes. Not good enough. And to RJ's point, like the offense was good. Like they <laughs> matched every single big shot the Warriors made in the fourth quarter. It just wasn't enough when you just never stop them. Like the Celtics <laughs> played just about, I don't know. I wouldn't say just about as good as they could because if they did, they would win. But they played a damn well, t- damn good offensive game in the fourth quarter. They just got outplayed by the Warriors who made more shots because the defense wasn't tight enough. Like, mm-hmm. that's where they lost the game. I hated the last shot. I'm mad as hell about it. I'm glad Tatum's going to have some time to sit around and think about what he did tonight. But I don't think, like, to your point, like, blaming the threes as a whole is not the answer yesterday. The defense is definitely the issue. I agree. Uh, last email we have from Matt Sousa. The Warriors didn't win that game. The Celtics lost it. Wow. Talk about the flip flop. Uh, something about the Warriors. They just have the Celtics mentally beat. We can never put them away. An 11 point lead isn't enough against them. Maybe this is a different game with Porzingis, but they didn't have Draymond. I mean, maybe they should have played him instead Horford of Horford because the Warriors have beaten that core a lot. I mean, how many wide open shots do we miss? Tatum didn't show up at all. Just kind of an embarrassing game. In my opinion, we really let this one go and it gave me the last two years Celtics vibes. Let's hope this isn't the start of a downward spiral like last year. I can't stand when Tatum just dribbles out the clock. Jacks up highly contested 33% three-point shot instead of getting the team Big involved. Three. Someone needs to grow some stones and say something. On a positive note, how about Keda? He might have Cornette beat in the rotation if he continues to play well and if the Celtics are open to changing their, that regard. O'Shea also playing great. Sorry about the length. Just so frustrating to watch them slowly lose the lead. It was so predictable from Matt. Uh, yeah, I mean, we've talked Thanks, about Matt. all this. Um Thank you, Matt. It's funny. Uh, Matt had a different perspective than RJ. Like he was definitely yeah. on the upset side, but every, he didn't say anything outrageous. Like he was right. Like the wide open three is missing. Sucked. Tatum five of 17, bad game from him. And he did throw in some positives at the end. So good for Matt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. That Thanks is kind emails. of the correct way to be angry, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Thank you all for the emails. We appreciate it very much. Let's go on over to the NBA section. And start with, did the Pistons win a game? I don't know if the Pistons have played since the last time we've talked, but have the Pistons won a game? No. No, (laughs) The answer is no. They haven't played. They've still lost only 24 in a row. So they are playing the... They They don't play tonight. I think they play tomorrow on Thursday when you're hearing this. Two-day gap for them. Play the Jazz. Pistons have not won. Outside of that, some recent uh, results. The Sixers finally lost a game. Uh, after their long win streak, they lost to the Chicago Bulls uh, the other night. They they lost to Kobe White, who has been playing out of his fucking mind. Uh, and just in spite of uh, 40 from Embiid and 29 from Maxi, nobody else had 10. Um, <clears throat> outside of that, uh, Bulls, Raptors, and Hawks all won their last games. Cavs have now won two in a row. Knicks won in a row. And the top of the East is slowly fading a little bit as the Celtics, Sixers, and Magic have on are on one or two game losing streaks. Bucks, however, have won five in a row. They're still up there. Pacers lost four in a row. Nets lost three in a row. Those two are slowly Jeez. falling. Four <clears throat> and six in their last ten. That is brutal. <clears throat> One good thing I'll say about the Celtics is they're still eight and two in their last ten. So they are still like yeah. amongst the elite. Good for them. Mm-hmm. Continue. Sorry. Speaking of the elite, uh, Timberwolves and Clippers both nine and one in their last ten games. So slowly climbing up there. Clippers, Clippers have now Saturday. won eight in a row. 
Celtics have them on Saturday. Timberwolves three in a row, Thunder two in a row, Nuggets one, Kings three. Top of the West is thriving. Uh, Mavericks have only, they've lost one in a row, but they're still six and four in their last 10. Teams at the bottom, Grizzlies one, Jazz one, Trailblazers one, Blazers beat the Suns. Uh, the other night, Suns are now three and seven in their last 10 games. Definitely not where they want to be. Big three um, no longer back. Hmm. They're back for like half a game. Yeah, no, they're 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 cooked. Uh, Warriors, as they just beat the Celtics, have now won three in a row, but they are still three and or excuse me, five and five in their last ten games. Lakers, Rockets, uh, also five and five in their last ten. So there is that. Pelicans seven and three in their last ten, though, turning things around, slowly climbing up. So there you go. Yeah. So the got. West has turned out to be just about as crazy as we thought. Like first. In eighth place, that are only separated by six games. Please be more in the East. Six and a half in the East. So it was a little bit more uh, spaced out in the Easter Conference. Mm. But there are a ton of teams like right next to each other. Just to put it in perspective, Dallas through Phoenix is only separated by two and a half games. Two games between four, uh, five and nine, rather. The, they've just had so much up and down amongst all of these teams, like you said. Pelicans seven and three all of a sudden. Meanwhile, Suns three and seven. Like both of those teams are teams that people saw in the playoffs. I thought the Pelicans would be in there. Um, and good for them. I mean, they're building a little bit of something in New Orleans now. Zion's able to be on the court every once in a while. They're starting to look like they've got a team around them, except for when they played the Lakers, of course, right? They just didn't show up in the in season tournament. <clears throat> they're slowly figuring it out. They're getting up there. Um, next NBA thing we have is Zach Levine update because apparently Zach Levine to the Lakers has some real legs. Darnell Mayberry of the athletic. I was talking to Jovan Buha of the athletic and Mayberry said, all signs are pointing to these teams, eventually finding common ground on a deal that works for both sides. This is the Lakers and the bulls. The mm -hmm. fit as trade partners was apparent before, but this season has progressed. Uh, it seems imperative they come together to trade. So it sounds like the Bulls, Lakers, Levine trade has some real legs uh, and could almost be, it almost sounds like he expects it to happen at some point. So, yeah, it does sound that way. I don't like the, it seems imperative that they come together because that kind of means like it feels like they have to. And like, I don't like the feeling that teams have to give the Lakers what they want because it's been that well, way for a little while. It's, would this make the Lakers better? Question. <laughs> it might. At the top, it does. It gives them like a more like speedy, dynamic option to kind of handle the ball. You know, are what you I mean? talking like, positive about Zach Levine? What is that? What are you doing? What are we doing? <laughs> I still think he sucks, but I don't know. Like, it might be easier for him. <laughs> Sam. So now we know. In case, in case listeners were wondering, Sam's hatred for the Lakers getting pieces is greater than his hatred for Zach Levine. It they sure is. I know. hate when the Lakers get free stuff. You know they're just going to give up like <clears throat> Hashimura and D'Lo, and it's going to be like deal. I think it'll be those two and picks. Yeah, to yeah. be honest. What picks? Uh, I don't know. I need to look. They don't have any Lakers picks. Has. They do they have, have one some pick. Picks. Let me see. Pro sports transactions. I have to go see which picks they have now. I, I don't. Think, I think they have twenty nine, and maybe like the new ones that they're now allowed to trade. <laughs> They can trade 29 freely, and I think 31 they can go out to. I'm not sure how that works. So I think they could potentially so trade those two. Picks. two. Um, they could also trade swaps in five and or six, um, which, I mean, at that point could be useful. So yeah, they, they have some stuff to work with. <clears throat> they have some stuff to work with. Uh, I think it'd be a good fit for what it's worth. I think him and Levy, or him and Davis would be a fine fit post-LeBron era as well. I think he'd give them some shot creation. It makes sense. And, I mean, if you're the Bulls, I mean, who else is trading for Zach Levine? I think is no the bigger one. thing. Plus, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, plus then you'd have, if I'm them, I tried to flip D'Lo. I don't really want D'Lo. Rui Hachimura is a fine, like, test piece to run it through four next to Pat Williams. So that's fine, but I don't think it's the end. How long are those guys' contracts? <clears throat> I'm sorry, they, I'm asking you a lot of questions. <laughs> they both just I know they resigned. just signed. Um, They both just resigned this summer. D'Lo is under contract for this season and then one more after. So 17 this year, 18-6 the year after. Okay. Rui Hachimura is 15-7 this year, then 17, and then 18.2. So this year, then two. Okay, more. so he's under contract a little while, too. <clears throat> yeah. I was going to say, like, what if, like, buyout, but no. No. <laughs> Not happening. Uh, and for what it's worth, I believe the Bulls at one point, or they want Austin Reeves. 
it's not going to happen. They're not going to give up Boston Reeves is basically what the sentiment has been. So sucks because like they really don't have leverage. Levine is kind of a negative asset. Mm-hmm. Nobody really wants him that bad. <clears throat> Yeah, and he's under contract for a million years. So yeah, no he's making a ton of money for a long time, and he's not that good. Mm -hmm. Tough to Uh, sell that. Speaking of trades, apparently teams are checking in and want Jarrett Allen from the Cavaliers. This is from Jake Fisher, friend of the pod. Uh, he wrote, Allen remains high on that proverbial list, list, excuse me, with two years remaining on a five-year, $100 million contract that will draw and has drawn plenty of interest from playoff contenders like the Pelicans. League sources told Yahoo Sports, like the fit for the Pels, get a big body in there. I would like it even more for the Grizzlies next to Jaron Jackson Jr. That seems like another team could do it. It makes sense yeah, that teams are in on Jared Allen, but it, I don't know like what it would be. Like I don't think the Cavs would be itching to jump at a Jared Allen trade. I think the Jared Allen thing only really has legs if Mitchell ends up out of there because their season is kind of up in the air. Garland and Mobley getting hurt for significant amounts of time is not ideal considering they didn't get off to a great start. Mitchell's only under contract. What? He has a player option next year mm-hmm. or the year after? I think it's uh, the year after. Let me look a lot of I think we talked about reference recently. for Jack today. Uh, Donovan Mitchell this year, the year after, and then 37 player option, yes. 25, 26. Same as Tate. So their window on Donovan Mitchell is starting to kind of shut here too, because I don't know if that guy wants to be in Cleveland hmm. for a significant amount of time after being in Utah. There have been rumors of him wanting to play for the Knicks. Wendy said he expects the heat to go after him. So if either of those teams are able to get anything done, the Cavs don't really have a purpose for Allen in the sense that he's going to help them win this year. They obviously have Garland and Mobley for a while, so they could keep him too. But if they really want to start scrapping stuff and just trying to collect more assets to rebuild or retool, then sure, Jared Allen could find himself on the move. Yeah, I guess it's just a we'll see. He's averaging 13 and 8 on, and 2 on 67% shooting this year, averaging a block a night. Like He's a quality player. <clears throat> he's on a good contract at 20 mil. It just doesn't. I don't know if they're in the market to make a trade right now. A trade like that, at least. Uh, Demar Derozan, meanwhile, um, with all the trade rumblings and all the Bulls stuff going on, remains committed to the Bulls. This is from Julia Poe of the Chicago Tribune. Uh, quote: Me being in the league so long, I understand this period of time. It just comes with the occupation. I really don't pay no mind to it. My priority is to be here, make this organization and team successful, and get through whatever tough stuff we're going through. Uh, in his defense, they are six and three in their last nine games. They have been playing better. He's been playing well. Kobe White's been playing well. Uh, and you respect his mindset because he doubled down. This is something he said before the season two. You respect the mindset of, nah, I'm committed. I want to be here. Like, I'm, I'm good, which is where he's at right now. Yeah, like, what's he going to say? Like, I think there is, like, something to him being a vet in the league where he's just like, whatever, dude. Like, I've competed at a high level. He's just trying to play ball. Like, I don't know. Respect. Like, I'm, I'm glad, like you don't have more guys just being like, I don't want to be here. Trade me, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, I think the understanding is he's probably going to get traded. So he, there's no reason for him to like, really have to be like, trade me, trade me, trade me, trade me. Mm-hmm. He can kind of ride it out and chill. Yeah. I wonder. We'll have to see what happens. I'm, I'm unsure what they'll do with the Rosen. I think it'd be malpractice not to trade him and not extend him, but <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Uh, last thing. John Morant is back. From Good his friend. suspension, dropped 34 points, including a game winner uh, over the Pelicans in his first game back. And then after, uh, <clears throat> was asked about it, and he said, "I'm a dog." <laughs> it was just like, he "Yeah, a dog, dude. I'm here. I'm that guy." That's to be expected. How did you cope with that? I'm a dog. <laughs> dog. I put it work in day out. And... <laughs> 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 You know what's funny is uh, Ja went 25 games without playing, yet he knew what to do with the game on the line, but Tatum didn't. Uh, yeah, I mean, Ja was awesome. He ended the game with, <laughs> I don't they know. They came back from that. like 24 down, too. <laughs> yeah, they, that was a big comeback. The Pelicans were up by a decent amount. Um, ja finished the game with 34 points, 6 and 8, 2 and 1, 12 to 24. He led the way for them. He was awesome. Um, this is, uh, the Pelicans, excuse me, uh, struggled a little bit. Zion had 13 on five of 12. Um, this is uh, what a game good for John Morant. Like, he, he, nice to see him come back, nice to see him pop off like that. 
It was fun. I mean, you should see him get hyped. Like, it was, no, like, I mean, I'm happy for him. For him. The suspension might have been like a little bit too long. I don't I don't remember what your stance on it was, but like essentially I didn't feel bad because it was like, hey, don't do this one thing. And then he did it again. Yeah. But like in a vacuum, 25 games is a long time for that. So he probably feels like he was slighted and he probably came in with a chip on his shoulder. So good for him for having a really good game in his debut. And, you know, as much as we talked about, hey, the Grizzlies should tank. I am rooting for them to compete. Like, obviously, Marcus is there now. Like, I want to see him not suffer. So, if they're able to play competitive basketball, more power to him. Like, I hope they do well. I agree. I agree. All right. Let's go to the rat list here. Would you like to kick it off? How many you got? I'm not sure. I'm going to make it up on the fly. I didn't put anything in. I have no idea. (laughs) Okay. So, this can kind of be like a, a transitioner from the NBA section. Rat list the dog at the Lakers game. The Lakers no. raised their banner on Monday night for the in-season tournament, and they had a dog sitting courtside. Apparently, it was a celebrity dog. It's a famous dog, yeah. I hate that with every ounce of my being. Why? No, no, genuinely, why? Because it's just ridiculous. But why? But why do you? Why? why well, like, that's a, for first and foremost, that's a seat that could have went to somebody. This is this is prime Sam hates for no reason. This is like the it top. Is. Like this is a perfect example of like there's no reason to hate it. You just hate it for the sake of hating it. You hate it's, it because it's people ridiculous. Like, it. like it's just this dumb. Is, this is something Sam hates because people like. That's it's true, but I still hate it. it. That's fucking insane. It, I guess if you want to like really tie it in, Ratless the Lakers for giving up a seat for the dog, <sighs> a dog that is man. very clearly well trained, but still like there is like some probability that it runs out of the court or pees or something in the court side. Like, kind of wild to just have an animal in the front row. It didn't have a seat, by the way. It was just with the fan under the seat. Was it like an is it an emotional support dog? Am I gonna get in trouble now? No, no, it's just his dog. It's just a, a celebrity like, dog. Famous on TikTok, yeah. It didn't have its own seat though. It was just I kind of hate that a dog is more famous than we are too. So there's that. <laughs> I don't get the hate. <laughs> I think it was cute. Of you I, I like the dog. You're you're well, the bubbly, like happy guy, and I'm the miserable guy. That's well, because the there's no reason to hate it. It's a fucking dog. Like there's genuinely no reason you have to hate it. You're just hating it. Jake King other didn't like it. Jake it. King tweeted about it. He said it was ridiculous too. He's equally his hater for no reason. That Good for him. Mean he, you're correct. He's a dog. That's why. Too. With a W, not an nah, O. It's some loser shit. He's me and me and Jay are like the John Morant dog, not like this stupid no. dog in the seat courtside. Nah, that's lame. The dog was fine. The, not, dog did nothing wrong. I I, I defend the dog. <laughs> maybe the maybe the dog is not the Rattlers, but the Lakers are, which is always fine. <laughs> sure. <laughs> We need to find um, common ground because this is a ridiculous occurrence. Nonetheless, I don't have common ground. I just don't like. I, it doesn't matter. Like I just don't care. I don't have an opinion. I think it's dogs cool. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> People like dogs too much too. There, there you go. Loser. There's your. Uh, Sam hates things loser. like that. You're, I, I do. Um, I just. I think people like dogs. Too uh, much. I don't get it. I don't get the unmitigated hate. <laughs> people will not like that in the comments. They'll be like, no, because there's no reason for it. I get away with a lot of things, but hating on dogs is where they will draw the line, it's which like is one only of the few furthering things, my point. It's like one of the few things that are like pretty universally loved. Like, yeah, dogs are awesome. Love dogs. Uh, and you're just like, eh, no. Nah. Because people it, like them too much. They're over, like, hey, look at my dog. It's like, I don't If care. over 60% of the population, Sam, uh, like something, Sam is just going to hate it for the sake of it. That's I wonder just if the six general... is the number. It's like closer to 65, 70. Nah, it's it's you're pretty loose with your hate. You just hate everything for the sake well, of it. At least I'm fair. Like I, I spread it around. You're it's not that's fair is not the correct word. It's just hating a lot. Like I don't think fair is the correct terminology. Sure is. It's not like I'm leaving anybody out. Like even the Celtics. Like I hate them. Hated them yesterday. They were terrible. Uh, they belong in the uh, rat list for making me stay up. Um. I had something. Well, it's not as much of a rat list as more of it as a story. So I hadn't done all of my Christian shopping like as of two days ago. And then what night? So today is Wednesday. So like Monday night, I think I just stayed up and did all of my shopping. Like I did everybody's stuff online. I ordered it and anti rat list all going to get here in time. W W by you. Very excited. A couple things I had to pay like, express shipping a little bit but the express shipping wasn't actually that bad so like sometimes you just pay the express shipping like yeah one thing about being an adult with like a decent job 
and like not having a lot of responsibilities at this point, which you don't really have it either, is you can kind of like indulge in luxurious things like express shipping and it rules. It does rule. But go on. Yeah, no, that was it. I was just hyped that I, I got it done. I was hyped that I got all the shopping in. I got stuff for mom, dad, stepdad, sister, brother, covered all my bases, feeling pretty all right. I'm like, cool. It's good. This is a good feeling. Love to see it. So, uh, Ratless. Anti Ratless. But yeah. Ratless, this waiter. I went out uh, to dinner with my girlfriend yesterday. <laughs> it was The food was excellent, by the way. Uh, it was not a girlfriend activity. Uh, who doesn't love dinner, right? And the entire time, this waiter was relentless in trying to upsell me. We sit down. He's like, do you guys want anything to drink? Here's like the drink menu, which is standard. Uh, we're both like, oh, like we'll have waters. He comes back and uh, he's like, oh, did you guys decide any drinks? And like, we're like, no, we're ready to order. So we both like got the same thing. And he tried to ask. I didn't hear this part, but he asked if we wanted to upgrade our fries upgrade them to like also i don't really think premium fries are very good for like what it's worth like when they start putting shit on the fries like i'm out on that i like truffle fries the truffle i think that's what it was but even that it's like eh, like whatever i I don't hate it i do hate when they put like the nacho cheese on the fries if you Mm -hmm. melt the cheese if you have shredded cheese and you melt it it's different but if you just like put like the liquid cheese on it's nasty and it makes it soggy but so he tried to get us to upgrade the fries. He's tried us to buy, get us to buy drinks twice. And then as we're wrapping the order, he asked my girlfriend if she would like a Coke or something with the just so we'll pay for a soda. Like how many things it's like a $2 upcharge. Like if like she gets a Coke, like, what is that? 20%. So you get 40 cents out of that tip. That's the extra you're like really fighting for there, King. And then anyways, we, we get our food. It was good. We eat the food. And my girlfriend, because she's not an adult, not literally, <laughs> cannot finish the food. <laughs> I always say, be an adult, finish your food. I swear to God, yes, I'm, not, yes, I'm yes. not Josh Giddy. Uh, <laughs> allegedly. And she asked for a box. He's like, mm. I'm assuming you don't have room for dessert because you asked for the box. But then he brings over the dessert menu anyway. And he gives us time with a dessert menu instead of just bringing the check. Mm. We're not getting dessert. The dessert Mm. menu was not overly impressive. Please bring me my check so I can leave. I also had to get back because we had a show yesterday at 930. And and like we had like other things. I think we went to the mall. By the way, Champ Sports Outlet uh, Province plays great deals. Um, But I was like, buddy, like. I don't want to buy anything else. Like we got what we wanted. Just knock it off. There's an episode of Atlanta where Donald Glover's character uh, takes out his ex. Like he's trying to like re woo her, win her over or whatever. And he's like broke. This is the first season. So he's out. And this guy, the waiters were relentlessly trying to upsell him. It is hysterical. He's got like $38 to his name. And he's like, He's stressing every time this man's like, would you like a bottle of wine? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I would like a bottle of wine. He's like, what the fuck, man? Like, quit trying to upsell me. It's a great scene. Um, Do you have anything else or should I just? Uh, I'll do one more. This can be a not serious ratless court, but it can be funny. Like, haha, ratless court. So my um, my sister's boyfriend is in the National Guard. And so he's been away, but he was coming back for like the holidays. Right. And so he was supposed to come in Thursday. But he texts me. He goes, Jack, I'm getting in early. I want to surprise Grace uh, and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll help. Whatever. So text me. He goes, I'll be, you know, my flight gets in at 10. My friend's picking me up. I'm going to, my sister was working overnight because she's a nurse um, or she's in nursing school, whatever. So she was coming back. He goes, I'll let her nap and then I'll come figure it out. And so I wake up, I, I text him like, okay, I'm good, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then grace comes to me and she goes i'm mad at zach right now because he's home and he hasn't texted me i'm like and i'm playing dumb at that point I'm like what are you talking about and she goes well you're supposed to i was like when is he supposed to be home and she goes thursday but he's home i'm like how do you know he's home like what are you talking about and she goes he left his location on and I, at that point i'm like he left his fucking location on this fucking dumb man's an idiot bro <laughs> he left his location on and then 
she goes out with her friend. She comes back and she goes, Jack, you're on the rat list for not telling me. I said, I'm not on the rat list for not telling you. You're on the rat list for checking his location and ruining his surprise. Kind of you agree with that. Rat. I, so, think, I think you're right. Like he asked you to yeah. like, you were trying to do a nice thing for your sister. And <laughs> I, I'm not really sure what I think of the location stuff. Out on is. location stuff. I don't like, like I think it's, it's a nice sentiment, especially if you want to like, just kind of check in and make sure the person's all right. But, like, yeah. also, like, do we really need to know where everyone is always? Yeah. I don't think I, so. My sister wasn't actually mad. She was, like, laughing, haha, mad. But it was just, like, it was yeah, a funny but, like, interaction. Yeah, she ruined the surprise for herself. It could have been a nice thing. Mm-hmm. She did do that. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Could have been oh, like, one of those emotional, like, when they come back videos. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I don't think so. No. Uh, no. All right. That's all I got. You can finish. All right. So, Rat List, uh, I don't really know who's in charge of this construction. But there's construction being done on the bike path near my house. Now, they are not actually doing construction on the bike path. And the bike path is important because every day when I or the days I run, I start on the bike path. The bike path goes up towards and around the beach area and it leads to a main road. So I need that to connect to part of my route. They are doing construction on a playground and they have removed the playground. But the bike path hasn't been touched, but they have it fenced off. So I've had to run through the sand, which is not easy. And it's a bad tone setter for the run. It's one of those mental things. It's like my legs are going to be extra tired if I have to do this. (laughs) And then jump a wall to get back to the regular road. Mm -hmm. Why do you have to close the bike path? Like, I don't know if you've ever seen anybody ever do construction, but like they're never really working that hard either. Like, it, and as a pedestrian, like, I can very easily move maneuver around to stay out of their way. Sure. Just open yeah. the bike path. Make it easy for everyone. <laughs> I don't even know why you have to tear down the playground. I mean, it's fine. It was there. Maybe they're making a new one. I hope they are. Um, also, like, not really a rat list, but it is a funny story. I'm in the car with my girlfriend yesterday, and she's playing Nicki Minaj. And there is a line in the song. Where Nicki Minaj, and I don't know when this song came out, and I don't know what song it is, but she name drops Carl Malone. Okay. In what context? <laughs> she said uh, something about like the post, like post player, something like that. She mentioned okay. the post. Probably an old song, but yeah. Yeah, but my girlfriend thought she was talking about Post Malone. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, do you know who Carl Malone is? And she said, no. So she she learned something new yesterday. I said, Carl Malone is this now third all time leading scorer in the NBA. Well, she she did do both. I found the lyric. Big truck, but I'm alone at the post, though, like post Malone. Call Malone and tell him I'm going postal like mailman. So, yeah, the mailman hit yeah. him with the one, two, with the post and the below. But did you then explain to her the other background? Yeah, Carl Malone Carl- impregnated 13 year old. <laughs> Yeah, but she probably wasn't too pleased at that. No, she was anymore. like, she was like, oh, that sucks. <laughs> she <laughs> yeah, was like, that's not... disgusting. Yeah, yeah, that's we denounced Carl Malone on this podcast. <laughs> not, not Carl Malone. No, no, can't, uh, can't uh, co-sign that behavior. No, I cannot. Shame. Yeah. No, no, shame to Carl Malone. That is why. Uh, <laughs> that is a word. That is that's the... not even one where like. Like, I'm not saying any of it's okay, but, like, sometimes you're like, oh, like, maybe he could have made a mistake. No. <laughs> no. No. Oh, man, that's terrible. All right. All right. Sorry if that's that ruined the tone, but I thought it was funny <laughs> that, that that was – I got to educate her on uh, it funny. that disgusting piece that's of like information. That's, like, the time I had to uh, – well, it's not the exactly disgusting part. It's, like, the time I had to educate my mom who didn't know that Donald Glover and uh, Childish Gambino Completely were the same Completely different. So funny. She was like, wait, no, that's the guy from Atlanta. What are you talking? I'm like, same dude. You didn't ruin anything for her. You probably just like made Donald Glover way better because he ruined. Yeah, she she was like, Oh, they, that dude's great. My mom, who can he, now sing all the music, who can no all, longer asking, who can now sing all the lyrics to Bonfire. Uh, so good, good for, for your mom. mom. <laughs> that rules. I played my mom Redbone because I thought she would like it. My mom just doesn't like anything I show her. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. Uh, Leave us a review on Apple and five stars on Spotify. Make sure to follow us on both platforms. Um, Yeah. 
subscribe to the channel. We appreciate the listenership. Thank you very much. Send us an email and I'll let Sam take us out. Hey, thank you very much for listening or watching. If you're watching, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our uploads, whether it's these full-length pods, the game recaps, Talk and Seize with Bobby Kravitsky, which those are a lot of fun. You should check them out. Bobby's great, and he's very informative. One just dropped. Stuff. One just dropped. Uh, you can also find film breakdowns, uh, rumor breakdowns, and also the live streams before every game. Uh, we were live the last two days. We will be live at 3 o'clock on Saturday for the pregame show against the Clippers. So subscribe. If you want the audio versions of the full-length pods and the game recaps, they are on Spotify and Apple. So you can follow us there, leave a five-star review, and say something nice. You can also reach out to us via email, hbtcpod at gmail.com. You saw everybody reaching out today. We appreciate it very much. We had some new people. I believe Ryan had never reached out to us before, or he talked to us about Zach Eady. I could be wrong. But uh, Matt, I think, was a first-time emailer, even though he's always in the comments chopping it up. You can also find us on socials at How About Them Seas. That's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Facebook is just the name of the podcast. You can find the pregame streams there as well as YouTube. Also, leave a comment. Say what's popping. To be entered into the Impop Needle giveaway, $10 to their website and you can pick from over 60 flavors of popcorn. All of it is excellent. There's so much to choose from. I just destroyed my bag of dill pickle and I have a few more bags waiting for me. You can follow Jack on Twitter at Jack Simone NBA. You can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Check, check, go. Come on. Tackle. Tackle. Tackle.